this isn't the best shovel. It's more of a jabbing tool. I did the stick uh plus I this one again two. Let's just watch this one. Let's see where he goes. So now that we got the dirt mostly dug away, I'm going to start chipping off the paint and cleaning off the excess dirt on the blocks. For that, I looked around at the store, looked at a lot of paint scrapers, a lot of brushes. We had a suggestion to do pressure washer. That would probably be the best option. Uh, we didn't want to rent one. We don't have a pressure washer. So I'm going to test this out. And as you guys might see, it's a grill brush for cleaning grills, but you know, like outdoor grill. So it's got a wire, stiff wire bristles and it has a scraper. And I just felt like this might work. So give it's it like a shot. It's like an all in one tool. Let me see how the scraper works first. Actually, that doesn't work too bad. I hit this knob on the wall if I go too angled. him one more time. Is it your own reason? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to put it in a case. What is it? A toad. No. What do you think it is? Yeah, is it a frog? Yeah. Uh, a Let's frog. put it in the water right here. Let's put it in the water right there. tough job, isn't it? Sort of. I mean, it's not fun. Yeah. Or at least they're not long. Perfect. have all these old posts here from the deck that we took out last year. We just cut the deck off and we need to take them out. So I already took this one out, which was concreted in. Not that deep. Pretty easy actually. Yeah. So we need to do this one and this one still because they're in the way. Yep. Concrete. Man, you did that so easy. <laughs> Too 
two seconds and it's out. That wire. Wonder where that goes. What does it go all the way to the garage or something? What do you think? I don't know. You're not supposed to bury Romex like this. This reminds me of that Three Stooges clip. Yeah. Where he's pulling the wire. <laughs> Oh, there was a splice joint taped together. You spliced Romex and buried it underground. Yeah, let's keep pulling it. Only protected by electrical tape. Actually, that's the second splice. Wow. Look at what? Another splice. What do they just link together every wire they could find? I guess so. <sighs> it's like we had no idea this was buried in our yard. Oh, it's going under a root. Well, this thing probably hasn't been used in. Well, it's not been used. In, yeah. A long time. Whatever they were using it for. But still, to do that is just silly. Yeah. It's not bur It's not rated for burial. And this isn't how you seal it. I just want to see this. If they just wire nutted it or what? So no wire nuts, no nothing. They just twisted the wires together and had tape all around them. That's pretty sad. And there's several of these splices they did. Yeah, look at so. it. They stuck a two foot piece of wire in there. Let's see if we can uh, keep this going. Still going. And it's out. So it went from the corner of the garage right up there. And they had about five taped together splices. That was random.
<laughs> he told me that tree is Ultraman. It's like Ultraman. Why is that like Ultraman? What tree? Mm, why is it? It was a uh, zoo. You know what zoo? Ultraman. You forget zoo. Um, Ultraman. <laughs> Yeah, did you forget me? Yeah. What, two Ultraman? Mm-hmm. I, I remember that. Mm-hmm. You forget to... Was that the Ultraman? I did that the Ultraman. You saw two of them? Mm-hmm. But why did you say the tree was like Ultraman? Oh, can you see? Because there's two? This is a dead branch. Okay, we've been working hard for the last few days, cleaning, scrubbing, and chipping the paint away off this foundation, so it's pretty clean, and we are tired of working on it. So, let's pretend that this is clean and primed and ready for paint, and we're gonna get painting. This is the paint we chose. Ashley and I are gonna brush it on. Probably should have picked up some rollers, but made in the USA, these should work. Yeah, it's looking good. It actually looks a lot better than it did when we started. Got a lot of that green uh, algae off it, and it just looks really nice. That barbecue scrubbing, that grill brush, worked perfectly. I always hate getting the brush painty the first time. You can see we chose a gray paint, and it's gonna be kind of like the color of cinder block, which is kind of odd. Let's see how it looks. I don't know what would have been better, a roller or a brush, so I grabbed the brushes. This will be fine, it's just gonna be a little slower. I was afraid of using a roller because I thought, I'm gonna hit it against the ground, I'm gonna pick up all kinds of dirt, and then I'm gonna be rolling the dirt into the paint. Patience. I'll get it done. I think Ashley is cleaning up some brush right now, but she'll be here to help me soon. And then it'll go a little quicker. I try not to hit the spiders, but they, you know. Mm-hmm. Did you know I started? Yeah, I saw you over when I was cleaning up the sticks. Yeah. I'm glad you came to help. Yeah. You can't do this alone. If I flick paint on you, I'm sorry. Sometimes I did it. Why are you dressed so nice doing this? This is looking sharp. So much better already. Yeah, look at the old part compared. Before and after.
right guys, we're all done. Paint is dry and it's looking perfect. I think we bought too much paint. We only put one coat on there, but it looks solid. So we're going with it. This color looks a lot more blue than we expected. We actually were trying to get a gray. And this is gray, but it has definitely a blue hue, but it's gonna work. It's gonna look good. It's nice seeing it all one solid color instead of like blotches, like white and chipping. And... So here's the back, looking sharp. Coming over to this side. The front looked the worst, I think. It had the most green and mess on it. You can see this is looking perfect. We wanted to get the foundations done before the siding so that we could paint easier without worrying about getting paint on the siding or any kind of weird issues. I don't know, just get it done. And the last side. And we should have pulled that old gas line out. It's not hooked to anything inside there. So we will have to pull that out and then patch that hole, but we got plenty of paint to touch that up when we do that. We are done. Foundation looks perfect. That means we're literally ready for siding. We have it underneath this right here. Hopefully it's in good shape. It's been under there for a while and I'm nervous, but um, you know, because of weather and moisture getting in. It's not vinyl siding, we'll tell you that. But anyway, it's going up. That's the next job. We can start it tomorrow if we want to. Finally. We've been waiting to do siding forever. Yeah. And to help us do the siding, I finally bought a new tool. We finally got a step ladder. Can you guys believe this? We're like a year into our renovation. The house is basically done and we finally bought a step ladder, which we could have used hundreds of times, literally during this renovation. You're probably wondering why we waited so long. I have no idea. We just, we just didn't want to spend the money. We were making do without it. But because we're doing siding together, just me and Ashley. Um, we're we, both gonna need to be like holding the board up. Holding stuff up, working together to get it done. So we need two ladders so that we can be, you know, both working on a ladder. We knew we already had a extension ladder. We didn't want another one of those. We wanted a step ladder because we never have one and we could definitely use one, even though we're almost done. Looked around online, found this one, and I just loved it. I thought it was perfect. I'll show you why. Okay. The ground isn't level here, but we'll demonstrate it. First of all, this has big grippy rubber feet, uh, which are really nice, rubbery and wide. So it's gonna have a nice stable base. I'm not selling this. this I'm not trying to be a salesman. I'm just telling you guys why I bought this because um, we bought this. No, you know, so it's not sponsored. Anyway, um, what I liked about it is that it gets close to the wall because of the way this is here. It doesn't have that paint stand that a lot of ladders have. Fiberglass, we usually, we usually buy uh, aluminum ladders. Never had yeah, a fiberglass. Yeah, this is our first fiberglass one. So I wanted to try that. I like the green and orange, I can't lie. And, the thing that really sold it to me was that when this is folded up like this, it's actually designed to lean. A lot of step ladders aren't really designed to lean. They're designed to be used folded out. So basically you can use it right against the surface like this. It's got the grippy feet and it's got these rubber pads to protect the surface. So we, we can lean it against our siding without damaging the siding. And that's really important to me because when you're on a uneven ground, it's hard to use a step ladder when it's folded out. But this way, we just need two of the feet stable and you can climb up. And I really like that because I actually use my ladders like that a lot. The other thing I thought was cool is how they shaped it like a V. And it's literally made for corners. So if you want to go on a corner of a building, it's really, really stable, you know. And even something like, even like a post, something round like this, it's really stable. You know, you're not gonna be tilting off, like tilting off like a, uh, a standard ladder. So that was it. I just thought that was really cool. Never saw that before. So this is gonna be our siding ladder and other usages. 
exciting. I'm just happy to, I just want to show it off because it's cool. <laughs> and that was literally the last tool that we were waiting for before starting the siding was making sure we had a ladder. I think we're ready. We actually have a siding nailer. We have the new air compressor. We got the nails. We're ready to go. Most of the trim, we can't decide. We're, we're, we're still debating about how we want our trim to be done. So we're, we, we might have enough. We also bought a few more new things lately. I'm wearing some new organic underwear. I'm not going to show that. <laughs> Trying it out. So, so far so good. Those are comfy. <laughs> but also something else. So speaking of clothing, you guys have commented a lot about me wearing black. I do enjoy to wear black. But sometimes I splurge and do buy a little color. Did that recently. When I bought my new mask. So I thought I'd just share this with you guys. Look at this. This mask is tie-dye blue. And look at this, it covers my whole beard. It keeps my beard safe from the virus. <laughs> you know what happens is you get these masks, they give them out at the store, they want you to wear a mask when you go in, and they, they're just tight on your face. And people like me, even though I don't have much of a beard, I have a beard and it kind of crimps it and it makes you look stupid. I was on a look for a mask that didn't push my beard in because it leaves a... When you take it off, your beard is permanently bent and it just looks really ridiculous. So I finally found this. I found this on Etsy. Handmade. I mean, all of them are handmade. But, <laughs> but it's pretty cool. It works good. I like it. And you guys get to see me in some blue. It's really neat uh, how they did it. Uh, I don't know, it's just a long mask, has a kind of scrunchy bottom. Has a stretchy band, goes around my head. Believe it or not, it's organic cotton. I really like my organic cotton. We've been trying to buy a lot of organic clothing lately. Yeah. For a and while, actually. You guys can go back to Kokomo, the house in Kokomo. Nobody knows what Kokomo means, but... <laughs> we uh, always say Kokomo, like everybody knows what we're saying. Go back two properties and we were buying our son when he was a baby baby, uh, organic clothing. That's when we really got into it a lot. Yeah. But that's the one, that's the one good thing that came out of this whole episode, I think something cool, is that these masks are so much easier to find now because I was looking for masks months ago because when I do uh, stuff in the house, woodworking, whatever, it's really dusty. And so I wanted to find a mask, like a simple cloth mask that I could put on comfortably while I'm working. And I had a hard time finding them. I mean, they sell the standard kind again. They, they push your beard and everything and it's annoying and you don't get a good seal anyway. And I've looked for cloth masks and I could only find like kind of made in China kind of stuff. Now you can go on places like Etsy and find all kinds of cool masks made in the USA, made out of organic fabrics. I love it. But I just want to say, don't put too much trust in these cloth masks. They don't really do a whole lot uh, and you're supposed to not touch them and everything else. So just be safe out there and don't rely on the mask too much. All right, guys, that's all we have for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and we should have another one coming soon. We're excited to get working on that siding. So thanks for coming along and until next time, take care. Bye.